speaking of ordering things, let's let's do some rankings. All right, I want we need some participation here if we can. Harley, if anybody has a really, really good comment, or of course a super chat, which we took four months off, so I don't expect the super chats to be rolling in just yet. But um let's Richie, let's rank our position groups heading into the fall. And we've got not gotten to fall. Obviously, we we're several weeks, uh, not several, three weeks away from fall camp getting turned up and going. But let's rank our position groups. So we got 10 position groups, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, put in together in one, offensive line, DN, D tackle, linebacker, cornerback, safety, and special teams. All is one unit, special teams as one. That's kind of cheating, but I, I wasn't breaking down like punters and kickers and stuff. Sorry, guys. So do you want to go one for one? Do you want to just read our lists and then talk about them? What do you want to do here? Yeah, let's just go one for one. Maybe start at the bottom. No, no. Let's start at the top. I don't okay. be depressed. No, I don't mean depressed. I don't feel like that. No, we can do that. Yeah, the position group you're the most concerned about. We're not saying they're the worst, and I'd love to be wrong. No. But yeah, let's do it. We start at the bottom. I bet we have the same thing. Go ahead. Uh, we were just talking about it. I, I have a linebacker. Um, okay. You know, we don't have the same thing then. Okay. It, it, I'm, it's nice to have Lundy back. You know, I'm, I'm, I think he is a quality, you know, not a plus plus player, but definitely a quality college linebacker. Um, I love the addition of Murphy from Alabama. I think that can help. Um, I'm just, can Blake Nicholson, you know, emerge because he was a very sought after recruit. Um, it's just not my highest position group right now. So I'm a little higher on linebacker than you. I do really think Lundy is is going to be pretty special for FSU this year. Um, I I think that he, um, I think he can give you like what, I think he can replace one of like Kalen or Tatum. Like I think he'll be that good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he replaced both, and so I do think that room takes a small steps backwards. Um, I do really like Juice Cryer. I I do think that Blake Nicholson is going to get some burn this year. I don't know if he, I mean he's certainly going to be a rotational piece. Um, and then you you mentioned Murphy, you mentioned Cam, or you didn't mention, but like we got Cam Riley. I think a lot of people forget him. He was the Auburn transfer that was committed to NC State now at FSU. Um, I I I'm a little higher on that room. They're actually my second lowest. Um, I'm a little higher on that room than I think you are. Not much though. They're, they're the defensive unit that I have the most questions about. I think that go, probably goes without saying, um, but my, my lowest or the room that I have the most questions about is the wide receiver tight ends. Um, you know, I know you return Morlock there. I think tight end number two is probably more of a blocking position at this point. Jackson West, um, you know, I don't expect Landon to come in and make a massive difference in year one. And obviously you lost Jaheim, who was really, really versatile. So you like, you need more luck to step up for you this year, uh, which he's capable of doing. Um, and then wide receiver, I mean, you're, you lost Keon and, and Johnny. So that's certainly a, a room that I've got a lot of questions around. Can Kintron stay healthy? Um, can Malik be a true number one? I, I kind of view Malik a little bit more as a, a wide receiver two on a lot of teams. Can Hakeem step up? You lost Destin Hill. You know, what do you get out of Ja'Kai and, and Jalen Lucas? You know, kind of more, um, you know, you're, you're, you're running slot with those guys. So, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential there in that room, but it is the, the room on offense and really the room on, on the entire team that I have the most questions around um, heading into the fall. I, do you have wide receiver second after linebackers? I do. Yes. Um, it, it, but I also think this is the one broom that has the biggest chance to, if we come back and revisit these rankings at the end of the season to make the highest jump of any of these rooms, right? If a high keen shows up, if a Benton shows up, you know, Jalen Lucas, I think is going to be a playmaker, maybe more in special teams. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I think this, there, there's a ton of potential in this room, but we have not seen it on the field on Saturdays yet. So until I actually see it, I can't come out and say, you know, they're, you know, the third best position group or, or whatever it may be. So I have them at number nine on my list. Okay. What do you have? So we have nine and 10, the same, but flip flopped. And that's fine because it's offense defense. Like it's, it's, it's the, uh, the idea of like, how do you rank offense versus defense? Right. And so it's kind of the same mm-hmm. idea. What do you have at eight safeties? Um, okay. All right. I have a safeties a little bit up from here, but I, I get it. All right, go ahead and we'll talk about it. I just don't love the depth a whole lot. I, I do. Again, I think there's a lot of potential in this group. You know, um, I'm a big Conrad Hussey fan, but he didn't play as much as I would have liked to see him last year. Um, I, I just, 
I, I just think the biggest thing is the depth because, uh, you know, we've had some injuries last season and especially the one game that stands out to me is Boston college, right? Where the secondary just looked disastrous. It was, and it was on the safeties, right? It wasn't necessarily the corners. So that's what I have right now. Again, I think they could be good. And the fact that Patrick Sertan is, is coaching them. I love that. I, you know, I, I, I'll never question his coaching ability. We saw the improvement, uh, from the two years ago to last year in a big way last season. But uh, that's my group right now for number eight. Okay, so I have safeties at, what's this, um, eight, uh, nine, eight, seven, seven. So I have safeties at six. So I'm I'm a little higher than you are. I think Shaheen Brown is an absolute baller, I, you know, and I really like Connor Hesse. I think those, you know, I, I'm really actually high on a lot of the secondary. But I, I think that safeties are, are less of an issue. Now, I do kind of question the depth. I like Barker back there. I think he's going to be really good for you. I like some of the young guys that um, you brought in last year that didn't play a whole lot, but um, got in and were able to mix it up. I I actually think safeties are going to be really, really good for you this year. Um, They're, I guess they're my second most questioned position uh, on the defense, but I think that's just because of, you know, due to the fact that you really feel good about uh, a lot of what the rest of the defense looks like. But I'm a little higher on safeties. I've got them at six. Uh, my eighth, I don't know if this is crazy. I don't know if this is a hot take. My eighth is offensive line. I think the offensive line somewhat underperformed last year. I don't think they were bad, but I do think we were billing them to be better than they were. And I think they were just, I think they were mostly just okay. Um, I, I think we were expecting them to take a little bit bigger leap in 2023 compared to 2022. I think they run, they run block. Very, very well. I don't think pass blocking was a was necessarily a strength. I think Jordan still had to do way too much with his legs. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think offensive line is one that, you know, I, I, I don't think they're going to be bad by any means, but can we get, like, better than average? Can we get, like, good, good offensive line play? And that's kind of my question. Rob Scott continuing to be injured. You know, I, I didn't love Byers and in pass blocking, what does Richie Leonard bring to the table? I've heard really good things on Ferguson. I, I really am excited for him. Um, I, you know Washington's going to be really, really good for you. And so, like, how does that all mesh together? How does that all fit together? Offensive line would probably be my eight. Do you have them higher? Where do you have them? All right, I'll get right back to it. But first, I want to give my guy John over at Got Spear some love. When you see these recruits and they've got the six-foot spear, and sometimes it's flaming, sometimes it's not – you can have those too. Go to godspears.com. He's got a deal running right now, $100 for a six-foot spear. You can get the torch spear, which is a six-foot spear with the obviously flammable torch that you see us use at the tailgates for $165. Listen, if you're local, you can coordinate a pickup at any time by texting John. Number is on the website. If you're coming to a game or two, give him a little bit of a heads up. Give him a week or two and let him know which game you're coming to this season, and he can have your spear there in person so you don't have to wait or pay for rush shipping or anything like that. Appreciate John and his team for their support, not only FSU Athletics, but our channel as well. And make sure that if you're getting a spear, you get it from gotspears.com. So my next room, and this is where I start to think that this roster is really good, actually. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not I'm nitpicking I have an offensive line at eight, yeah. I think. So <laughs> I... I have quarterback. Um, okay. I have quarterback I think, at seven. So we're really close there. I have seven. You have eight. Yeah. It's kind of the same idea. So I, well, no, the quarterback's my seven because I had linebacker at 10. Oh, that's right. Wide, that's right. You have wide receiver, eight. tight end at um, nine, safety at eight. And then uh, DJU, I think he's a really, really good college quarterback. And I think Brock Glenn is a more than capable backup. Um, so this isn't really to say anything negative about the quarterback. It's just, to me, it made me realize, man, this roster might be better than I realized. So we have a super chat down there, and then I'll talk about quarterback as well. James, I appreciate the love. Harlan, you got something for him? Put a smile on your face. Okay, because Florida State, if we going to do it, then we do it big. Let's go, baby. Appreciate you, James. Appreciate the love. Again, welcome back to live. It's been about four months since we've been on here doing this. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's... Yeah, I'm at quarterback too. I've got it. I've got it seventh. We both agree there. I, yeah, I think DJU is going to be good for Mike Norvell. I, you know, it's kind of crazy that he had a um, 
kind of crazy that he had a better QBR than Jordan Travis did last year. Again, not the end all be all, but when you look at more advanced stuff, I think he'll fit fine into Mike Norvell's offense. Um, you know, Andy Staples talked about this this week. The in ear communication is going to be big for him. And so, yeah, I, I think DJU quarterback room, I like the backups. I think it's really solid with Brock Lynn having good experience behind him. I, I think seventh is fair. James says, yeah, Leonard will be much better now that he has a better coaching in place for a better team. <laughs> I would tend to agree with that. Florida fans were not big Richie Leonard fans. I did notice that he had the most snaps on UF's offensive line last year, uh, which admittedly wasn't great, but there, he, he continued to find his way into that. So, um, all right, I had safeties next, which you already talked about. What do you have at six? I have the offensive line. Um, okay, so we talked about that. So our, this is hilarious. Our six through ten – is the same. I'm a little <laughs> higher on the safeties than you are, but like we flipped nine and 10, we flipped eight and six and we had seven identical. So of course this is how this goes when I want to, we did start. not discuss this before the show. We didn't No. <laughs> Usually I'll make a graphic and stuff, but um, I, I'm a little bit in shock at how much this was. So safeties at, or I'm sorry, offensive line at six. Yeah, that's I have him at six. Um, you know, I like Darius Washington. I think, you know, he was all ECC last year. He'll be all ECC pushing for all American this year. I don't love buyers. Uh, if Murray Smith can stay healthy at center, you really like that. And I, I think we while we lack, you know, the, uh, enough elite players, that we have the depth to withstand some injuries, which happen every year on the offensive line. And you're yeah. not going to take, you know, three steps back. You might take one or one and a half step back. So I don't think the offensive line is going to be elite or even very good, but just give me good offensive, offensive line play. But for me, I think it's the depth that Alex Atkins has built up because there were years where we felt good about our starting five. I go back to Willie Tackers first year and one player goes down Landon Donovan and the entire offensive line just falls apart. You don't no. feel like that's the case heading into this season for sure. And you know, I think there are certainly going to be tougher pieces that would, you'd have to replace. I'm not going to say names because uh, I don't want to put that in the atmosphere, but uh, there are certainly tougher. Than, Donovan. <laughs> yeah. There are certainly tougher, uh, tougher people to replace, but it does feel like Florida state could withstand an injury or two. Um, yeah. and not just be decimated. So, all right, top five. What do we have left? We have running back left. We have defensive end, defensive tackle left. We have cornerback left. We have special teams left. I, I'll go five here. I put special teams at five, and I think I'm doing this them a disservice, Richie. I talked with you about this. This is the one that we did talk about. And I think, now this might be a hot take. Master Mono will love this. Um, but I think you could almost have special teams at one. Not because I think they're special teams is more important than than people think, right? And and it very much is the reason you win and lose games a lot. Um, but I I just have no questions about special teams. I think we're going to be rock solid there again. I think Mastromano is great. I think uh, Fitzgerald is great. His turnaround from last year was phenomenal. Um, I really like the addition of Jalen Lucas. You didn't lose Deuce Span. Like he's still there. The guy that took the kickback against, um, uh, against Duke. Syracuse. Um, Duke. Yeah. Yeah. Duke on national. And so I think you're in really, really good shape. Um, in at special teams, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll see who the punt returner is. Is that your big question? Again, punt return to me after years of, of Florida State football, it, it, yeah, it, well, it's just like, catch the ball. Just don't, just don't let it bounce. <laughs> and so I, you know, I, I've got special teams at five because again, I, it's hard to, it's hard to wait like how you compare like special teams versus defensive end or, or anything else like that. But, um, yeah, I've, I've got special teams at five. What do you got? Special teams, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel so yeah. good about some of these other positions that that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, I feel really good about yeah, no, it. Again, I could see an argument though for them being way higher than this. Yeah, if if they weren't only on the field for you know ten plays a game or, or whatever it may be, then and we didn't even talk about you know Shaheen Brown who had the block in uh, the Superdome a couple of years ago. Which again, you can't count on that. But yeah, I think Master Mono has a chance to. I'm not sure what the uh, punter of the year award is, but he has a definite chance to Ray win. Great guy, yeah. Great guy. He has the name recognition, and it, his numbers from last year were ridiculous. 
Like that, that guy has a boot. You know, we had a lot of questions about Fitzgerald coming into last year. He silenced all of those questions um, as the season went on. And I think the return game, to your point, TJ, you know, I go back to that, that 2017 season. Tavares McFadden was probably the player I got most frustrated at the most because he would just point to the ball on punt returns. He would never catch it. And we would lose <laughs> Frustrating. Any, anywhere from 40 to 60 yards a game in net punting because he wouldn't even – just by not doing a fair catch. That's what was so maddening to me. So, again, if we find someone who can just catch it, I'm hoping, really, really hoping it's Jalen Lucas because that guy can fly. Like he yeah. is a he is a bullet. He is a freight train, not in the sense of power, but in the sense of speed. Um, and he's got to be tough to see if here on the punt return team because he, he's not a big guy. Yeah, I see a lot of DJU talk. I don't think we went as far into DJU as we uh, in into that discussion as we should have. So we'll finish up our last four here, and then uh, I want to talk a little bit more about Uyunglele and, and thoughts there. Um, all right, fourth, I I I bet. I bet we were the same on these. I got cornerback next. You got cornerback next? So my number four, I have running back. Okay. So I have running back three. I assume you have cornerback three. So we Correct. just flip-flop there? Correct. Okay. So I, again, how do you rate offense versus defense? It's kind of the same question on special teams, right? Like how do you compare, you know, the greatness of, of um, I texted this to Richie and them. I, how do you compare the, uh, the greatness of, of Shaq versus MJ, right? Like how do you even yeah. compare, like how, so how do you compare running back and cornerback? Yeah. I feel really good on both. I think running back is a little bit more depth than cornerback. That's the only reason yes. I gave it the slight edge. Um, so running back at three for me, cornerback at four. Um, I love as Thomas. I love the fact that you got, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you were going to get him back, have an eligibility, but also getting Fentrell back for another season is massive. You got a lot of young guys in that room. I think will be really, really good for you. Earl little is going to be really good again. I, you know, think you lost greedy Vance because of how good you expect Earl little to be this year. Um, and so I, I think that that's going to be really good for you. You'd know, love to keep greedy, but you know, if you were only going to keep one writing was kind of on the wall on who won that job out. And so I, I really like cornerback. I think running back is a little bit deeper. I think Toa Philly is, is, has a chance to be a true number one this year, though I think we rotate like crazy back there. I mean, I'm really excited for both rooms. I mean, you know, we've, we've got them at three and four. Um, we flip-flopped our, our ideas on each room, but uh, I, I'm excited for both of them. Yeah, so my thought process here was I think running back's deeper, which is great because that's another position that can get banged up. You know, Toa Philly, Roydo Williams, Cam Davis, Kaziah Holmes. I mean, all of those guys could probably start at some schools in the ACC. So I love the depth, but we don't have a proven superstar just yet. I, I do think Roy Dill Williams could be that guy. We'll see. Um, but I think when you go to cornerback, I think you have the more higher potential, right? The AZ Thomas and Earl Little Jr. are both, to me, potential first-round picks. If things shake out the way they potentially could under um, Patrick Sertan. And, uh, you know, Fentral Cypress, you know, he was an all-ACC player at Virginia didn't have the best year last year, but I think if he can find that, and I do think he will. So I just think there's probably more stability at running back, but the higher end talent to me is at quarterback. So that's why I went three and four, but it was close for me. Um, all right. Leaves our top two, uh, all on the same larger unit, but how did you, how'd you rank <laughs> defensive ends, defense? I put defensive ends first and defensive tackles second. Oh, so this is good. We can, we can differ here. I have defensive tackles first. I just think Daryl Jackson and Jordan Farmer, I, they both have the potential to go in the first round. And I just think they are studs. And th the fact that I think the camaraderie between the two just being great best friends, essentially, um, since before they even ever left for college and, uh, you know, having Lions and, and you bring uh, Grady Kelly in. Uh, he probably thought he was coming in to transfer as a starter. And it, you just have such great depth. I think Patrick Payton, it's his money year at defensive end. Marvin Jones Jr., I have extremely high hopes. I just need to see it because he, he didn't have a chance. But you know who else was kind of lost on a depth chart at Georgia and didn't really have a chance to show what he had until he got to Florida State? Some guy named Jermaine Jones. So Jermaine Johnson. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, sorry. Uh, with the Jets. Um, the two. Fl that's flip, a, flip a coin here, guys, because uh, either one of these, I, I think it, the story I think we're both telling here, TJ, is – this could be a top five, top three potential to be the best defensive line in the country. 
Yeah, I think it'll be really good. I think it'll be the best in the ACC um, or have a chance to be the best in the ACC. It's certainly the best starting four. Uh, I put defensive end ahead just due to the depth. I think you do have a little bit more depth at, at end. I also think of your top four, I do think Pat Payton is your best of those four. And so that's why I gave um, him the slight edge. You know, Marvin Jones Jr. and Daryl Jackson are both kind of in the prove it category to me. And so then it came down to Farmer and, and Payton. I lean Peyton there. I still love Josh Farmer. That's not me saying that he's not going to be great this year because I think he is going to be. I'd lean Pat a little bit. I'd lean uh, depth to defensive end a little bit. Either way, however you want to slice the defensive end, defensive tackle, uh, that front is going to be nasty. And I think they are going to be really, really good this year. <laughs> and I'm I'm yeah. really excited to see them. I, again, I think that starting four you could put up with – you know, it's probably behind Georgia. It's probably behind uh, Ohio State. Like, there's probably a couple of defensive line that it's behind, but Bama, it's yeah. it's like top five uh, for a starting four. What does the rotation look like? What does the depth look like? Obviously, last year you got to go to the depth of like Braden Fisk and Fabian Lovett behind, it. like that. You know, <laughs> you don't necessarily have that this year, but I, I do still think the defensive line is going to be really, really good for you. So, um, hey, let's um. Let's talk a little bit more about DJU. So again, you had DJ, you had him at, we both had him at seven, right? Yeah. And uh, se- like ranking the rooms, right? You know, it, to me, I think seven's fair, but I am, I think DJU is going to be really, really good for the Knowles this year. Like, yes. I, you know, I'm not projecting him to the Heisman Trophy ceremony by any means. Um, but I, I think that when you look at a couple of things, you look at kind of how he gets to start, um, and the fact that you're playing Georgia Tech, Boston College, Cal, SMU, Memphis in the first five weeks, that's out of order. But um, when you look at like that's how you get to start, right? Teams that you should just be pretty imposing against, um, I think that really gets him set up for a lot of success. And I don't necessarily know that he needs to be perfect in those games for you to come out the winner in any of them. Um and then, you know, honestly, getting Clemson next is is kind of a blessing, too, because you know he'll be motivated for that and play that really, really well. But, yeah, I, I think that if you if you just get Oregon State, like last year's DJ Uyunglele, in Mike Norvell's offense, I think you're 10-2. I, I mean, I'll just that's, – that's my hot take for the year, right? Like, all he has to do is be himself from last year, and you get 10-2. If he's any better – under Mike Norvell, if the in-ear communication improves at all, you know, or helps him at all with Mike Norvell, if some of the weapons develop and, and wide receivers and offensive line and and th- those things and defense is putting him in a good position, which we really are high on the defense this year. They think we think they're top ten in the country. EA thinks they're top ten in the country. Um, you know, all of the different metrics that you read about, you know, Phil Steele and all them, they all think they're top ten. If all those other things happen, I think you're looking at the chance of eleven or twelve wins. I, and honestly, like that's that's kind of how I'd put it. If you if you just get what you got last year, you're ten and two. If he's any better, you're probably looking at better than ten and two, right? And I don't have to spell out what that looks for you, but you're probably going to the playoff at that point. So yeah, I, I think that it kind of comes down to can he improve at all? Because I think you know what the floor is. I mean, the floor for this team. I mean, DJ could be bad, and you're probably still finding a way to go nine and three. Yeah, right? I, he could he could be like Clemson level, and you're probably still going nine and three. Um, let's remember at Clemson, he does hold the record for most opponent passing yards ever to happen in Notre Dame at Clemson. He also lit us up for four touchdowns, uh, in the last game that Florida state ever lost inside of Doe Campbell stadium. Um, so yeah, I think that even if you get Clemson level, you just hope that his big moments are against some of the bigger teams, which he does seem to kind of have a knack for the bright lights. So no, I, I don't think we did the DJ conversation necessarily justice. So wanted to kind of go a little bit further and having him seventh is not necessarily a, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't think it was a slight. I just think I'm really, really confident in a lot of the other rooms, and you have a lot of depth there that you're pretty confident in. And, uh, you know, if, if if DJ was to go down, you know, I like Brock Glenn, but I don't know that, you know, I don't, I don't know how that changed your outlook on the season. So, yeah, I think seven was fair. Yeah, combine defensive line as a whole instead of defensive end and defensive tackles and take out special teams, and he's he's number five, right? Like, yeah, it, great way like to look he, at it. He's very good. He's a very good college quarterback. I think he will be just fine. I think Mike Norvell, whether you go back to Brady White or what he did with Jordan Travis, and don't 
understate what Tony Tokars can do as a quarterback coach. I think he played a huge role in Jordan Travis's development. And I think he's going to do a lot of good things with DJU. And keep in mind with DJU, what we have is a guy coming in strictly on business. When he came for his official visit, he did not want to see the facilities. He's like, listen, I've seen them. Let's watch film. This is a money year for him. He, he is concerned about trying to get to the next level, to get to the NFL. He is fully focused on football and nothing else right now. And to have that as a quarterback leading your offense, leading your team, I think that's a big deal, and I think we'll see dividends when we go to Dublin in a few weeks. Yeah, I am very excited for him, and that's a great point. The Kind of the put him at, you know, don't split up defensive and defense tackle, take out special teams. Yeah, then you're, you're looking at a top five. So um, I will say this as well. I saw a question down there about, you know, I think he also gets a lot of crap for, like, how Clemson went. But if you look at Clemson's quarterback play, like the last – four years now five how's years. Steve Klubbeck uh, doing yeah it's it maybe maybe the quarterbacks aren't the problem there 